the VW T5 camper van conversion time lapse. So first things first, the bulkhead needed to be removed. As you can see, the flooring was extremely dirty. That needed a full jet wash and a full scrub, but it came up really nicely after some elbow grease. As you can see, the old flooring was fully past its sell by date, so it was used as a template and new flooring was cut down from that. Ultra safety flooring was then laid on top of the new plywood flooring. It was trimmed down with Stanley blades. It's very tough to cut this stuff, but you can get through it with a couple of blades and you just trim it to all the contours of the van where needed. To lay it down, I found the easiest way is to spray adhesive one half, fold it over and then just spray the other down. The insulation had bubble foil throughout that was adhered with high temperature adhesive. Then there was a mixture of 25 and 50 mil PUR insulation boards fitted in. All the boards were chamfered to the panel shape where required to try and get the boards to fit in as tight as possible against all of the van panels. All of the insulation boards were held in place with aluminium foil tape. The high top inside the van was also insulated with bubble foil, again with high temperature adhesive. After the bubble foil was applied, it had 25mm insulation boards applied again throughout all over the high top, on the top and the sides as well. Again held in place with the aluminium foil and the mixture of the high temperature adhesive spray. Obviously with a camper van all of the hot air is going to be rising so the better you can insulate the high top or the roof lining and the better the more the van should be able to retain heat inside it. So as you can see the insulation in this van is quite substantial. Next up was making a overhead locker because the original van didn't have any sort of locker there. So as you can see it's just a case of cutting down some plywood and cutting a door into it. The plywood I had had a little extension put on the side just so it fit exactly edge to edge and then it was carpeted down. Again, using high temperature adhesive for the carpet. It's four way stretch carpet used throughout the conversion as well. You can see once the overhead locker front fascia is in place, it's all screwed to the original uh, high top mounting. And once it's in place, it provides additional storage throughout. The access hatch was also carpeted and that was attached to use an a piano hinge and the carpet was peeled back just to apply the piano hinge underneath the carpet then the carpet was then reapplied over the hinge just to try and hide the hinge away as much as possible and once it's in it provides additional storage then we want to carpet in of the ply panels inside Again, the easiest way I've found on carpeting of the ply panels is to do half and half. You want to try and cut the stretch carpet to just over the size of the panels. Fold one half down, spray the ply panel and the carpet, apply that. Fold the other half back and again spray the ply panel and the carpet. Doing it half and half also means that you can't get over spray on either side of the carpet because one side's always folded on top of the other. The headlining was also carpeted and I've cut new headlining from new ply panels. As you can see that's the half and half technique. Once it's done, fold the panel over, just spray some adhesive all the way around the edges and trim it back. Once the panels are done, it's on to carpeting the metalwork inside the van. This van has been carpeted in sections and strips of stretch carpet. Where there's any joins in between any of the carpet, it's just a case of butting up the cut edges as closely and tightly as possible. And then if need be, just get a little brush or comb and you should be able to mask in the joins of the carpet once it's all finished in. And once it's all done, it should look nice and professional. The whole point of carpeting inside the car uh, camper van is to ensure that there's no exposed bare metal because that's where condensation might start to form. So carpeting all of the exposed bare metal should try and reduce that. If you're carpeting uh, sliding doors or rear doors, just carpet up to where the rubber meets the inside of the door. 
the arches are really simple as well as you can see just a small piece of carpet per arch and just stretch and fold it to the contours of the arch when carpeting as i say the sliding or the rear doors the best thing is to close the doors draw around the inside of the doors where the rubber meets the door or the carpet up to that marker otherwise if it rains rain might seep in past the seal and get the carpet wet if you only carpet up to where you draw inside then it should never get wet always just make sure that any carpet is trimmed back to that point as i say you don't want any carpet going past the rubber seal into the exposed environment to break up the interior new headlining was made and the headlining had vinyl applied as you can see now getting the new headlining up is a two-man job initially just because there's no previous mounting holes or brackets so it's much easier just to do it with two people once the headline is in it's a case of applying all of the carpeted panels back inside and if you're screwing any carpeted panels into the metalwork obviously make sure that any screws that you're using aren't going to be going all the way through and piercing the outside skin of the van as well nice and short screws just to be able to pierce the inside of the mounting frame the seats in the VWT5 were a bit tired so they were swapped over for some Mazda RX-8 seats these seats are really quick and easy to fit in most vans and the wiring is very very simple and easy to do as well and once they're fitted they transform the interior look of the van to get some heat inside the van a Chinese diesel heater was fitted as you can see here I was just doing a bench test just to get everything connected up to be sure that everything was working before I fitted it inside it's very very simple very very easy there's just a few connections to make intake and exhaust and the fuel for the pump either fed from an external tank or the internal tank as you can see I'm drilling through the two holes for the intake and the exhaust for the heater and there are the two metal pipes being fed through heat is fully attached and clamped down onto the intake and the exhaust and as you can see the fuel pipe is attached as well the heat is pushed down and secured down so to mount the solar panels all of the solar panels have been mounted with brackets with uh, bolts screwed through the high top to be sure there's no leaks all of the holes have sealant throughout and then they're bolted in and secured in the headliner has six LED downlights fitted into it. Just to be sure that they're all nice and level and straight, it's just a case of marking them up on the back and drilling them straight through. The lights just secure with two sm uh, small screws inside the lights. And once they're fitted in, they're attached to a dimmer just to be able to control the brightness inside during the day or night. The kitchen was made from scratch it was constructed mainly from csl timbers and lightweight 10 mil shower board for the fascia of the kitchen the kitchen was made to house a smev 9222 cooker and hob and sink unit and it was also built to house a gas bottle and a three-way fridge with water storage as well all built within the one unit the unit was built for the contours of the van as well as you can see i'm using just the 10 mil shower boards for the fascias rather than furniture board it's actually lighter than the furniture board and it looks quite nice and you can get some nice printed designs on it as well and because it's shower board you know it's going to be waterproof now because there's a three-way fridge getting fitted that does mean that there's going to be some vent holes and an exhaust that do need drilling and cutting into the panels of the van now whenever there's any holes cut they do need painting and priming just to be sure that they won't rust in the future the vents are then stuck on now these are some slightly older vents but the van's going to get a respray so all the vents are going to be getting repainted as well now the gas storage area has a dropout hole as you can see and again all holes are painted just to protect the longevity of the van itself 
the Smurv unit is relatively straightforward and simple to fit. It's just a straightforward compression fitting straight onto the gas connection on the Smurv unit itself and that just connects straight off to your gas supply. So we're now on to the bed build in the van. I went for a slightly different type of bed for this conversion. I went for a U-shaped bed build. Now again, all of the bed frame is going to be constructed out of CSL construction timbers. And then all of the boards are going to be cut from 9mm plywood. Again, the frame of the bed is cut to the contours of the van. There's some cutouts made for the wheel arch on the bottom of the frame. And the frame itself will eventually be secured again to the side of the fan. Well, as you can see, all of the panels for the sofa bed are cut out of 9mm plywood. Now the section on the driver's side of the van is slightly shorter because that tucks up behind the kitchen unit but because the sofa bed is going to span pretty much the full width of the van behind the kitchen unit and almost up to the kitchen unit itself it's still a really good generous sized bed when it's made up into the bed position. Again, all of the CSL timbers are just secured together for strength. Where there's extra sections that are going to be needed in between the two side pillars, they're just joined together with additional sections built into the frame. Once all the framework was done, just to neaten it up, it was all carpeted as well, just to hide all of the construction timbers and all the joints between all of the timbers themselves. All of the access panels for the sofa bed, whether they are the top panels or the side panels, are all built so they're fully accessible. As you can see, there's some stretch carpet used just to carpet over the frame, just to neaten it up. I'm going to use a slightly different coloured carpet in, rather uh, compared to the carpet on the side of the walls. Again, just to break up the interior a little bit more. all the panels are attached using piano hinges so they're fully accessible whether it's from the seating panels or from the front panels that flip down as well so all the panels are also carpeted with stretch carpet again just for that nice neat look inside the van more piano hinges for more added access So as you can see, every panel flips up or flips down. Now I did previously fit a window in the van, but I didn't like the size of the window. As you can see, it's quite small. So I decided to cut that out and fit a bonded window. So to get some nice neat edges around all of the corners, as you can see, a hole saw was used in each of the four corners and the jigsaw just to join up the holes for a nice neat cut. So as you can see, the van's also had a recent respray in two-tone blue and white. I just didn't get that on camera. But after this bonded window is fitted in, this is the last job in this VWT5 camper van conversion. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful.